Um, Mr. Murray, I think you and I had more than one discussion about funding for your department when you were the district attorney, and there's almost always never enough money for the job you do. Is that right? Not even close yeah. uh, in North Carolina and certainly not for the city of Charlotte. I want to make it very clear that the bill that we proposed does not presumptively withhold money. It just simply says that if you do not co cooperate with ICE and this person goes out and creates a victim, you've got a choice. You either potentially have federal funding withheld or you allow that person to pursue a case in civil court as a victim. Um, I've got a question for you, Mr. Murray, on the change in policy, uh, really a sea change in policy. We were a 287G program back when you were district attorney. Now we're a sanctuary jurisdiction. Uh, in the time that that's changed, have we seen any, any data suggesting that there is additional crimes being committed either in Mecklenburg County or in the surrounding counties. I have information from sheriffs in surrounding counties that say that they have seen people released from Mecklenburg and they've been arrested for subsequent crimes in their county. What have you seen? Senator, I, I believe whenever you put somebody out on the streets that's prone to commit crimes, they're gonna commit other crimes and they're not caught every time. So there is no doubt that there's an impact as I told you directly from individuals, but they're, they are getting out on the street unnecessarily and they are reoffending and they reoffend in the same community that they are comfortable. So if it's an illegal immigrant, they're going back into an immigrant community and reoffending. And most I think of the time. in some cases they're actually exploiting the fact that that community is uh, less likely to come forward for, uh, for a variety of reasons. So they're going back into the communities with other people who may be illegally present and making those communities less safe. The two examples that you gave are probably a 20, 25 minute drive from my house. I know them well, and I think that we're, we're actually victimizing the very population that I think we're all concerned with. Mr. Robbins, um, what help would it be if, if we, uh, through Congress, provided clarity on local law enforcement agencies holding uh, these um, illegal aliens uh, for at least 48 hours to give ICE an opportunity to uh, go and visit them in the jail and potentially transfer them for the full 48 hours? It would, it would be tremendous. Uh, the opportunity to, and, and that, that's, I've been a law enforcement officer. Yeah, I, I want to clarify, you know, what we have is if somebody's arrested on a crime, you go through a process, you may release them before the 48 hour period because local law enforcement feels like they have an obligation to release. We need to provide clarity to say that they could be held up to 48 hours for us to process uh, the things that you're concerned with. Is that correct? So our, our current detainer now, uh, we, we use probable cause to actually issue that detainer. That detainer is also accompanied by an administrative warrant. Yeah, and Mr. Robbins, when they get released, do you just not pursue them? No, absolutely. I, I mean, what, what we do is we have to then pursue right. them. And so what, what's the difference between an orderly release when you go and transfer them into ICE custody versus what you have to do? You said you have about so, 6,800 officers correct. nationwide. That's fewer police officers, I think, than we have in Mecklenburg County uh, for the whole country. So when you suddenly have to go from an orderly safe transfer out of a local jurisdiction into ICE, into a pursuit. Give me an idea of what that. So, as a law enforcement officer, if you can walk into the sa safe confines of a jail, you know they're where, not armed. Where nobody's armed. It's safe. We're not going to run into any collateral arrest. Our officers can go in, make the arrest for those that we've had probable cause to place a detainer on, and we can do that and place them into custody safely and quickly. Do you have any any data? I don't expect you to give it to me now, but I'd like information on when. You have had those who were released uh, not cooperating with the detainer orders, and then your pursuit has created dangerous sure. situations or injury for ICE officers. I'd be very interested in sure. getting that information. Sure, we can get you that information. But when, 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 an, when an alien is released, a criminal alien is released back into the streets, we then have to send a team. We have to do all the officer safety checks to make sure that our team can go out there and make the arrest safely. Uh, there's danger for not only our officers, the subject we're arresting, and, that and possibly be, the community members. That could, I'm sorry to talk over you, but I got a lot of things I want to cover. That, that could be team members that may be working on joint task force with local law enforcement, right. for well, you, gang, gang members, any number of other things. That's at the expense of these other areas where we have a pretty good track record of cooperating with local law enforcement. Is that accurate? That is accurate. Thank you.